Okay, guys, um, for this next assignment, it's going to be very Photoshop heavy. And I was inspired by um, a variety of works that have been popping up on my feed about animal mashups. And they're called What Ifs. Um, and they're actually quite funny. So you can see, um, you know, the gorilla face with the elephant. And I love that one. The little um, pug-like dog with the crow body. Um, I'm not going to hover over the top because you can see it's really hard to see them when I do that. The guinea pig lion. And you can come up with, uh, there were some of the variety of names. They're actually pretty funny. Um, but I really want you guys to come up with, I love this one. This one's really well done. Really well thought out. They looked at the patterns of colors. And I really want to make sure that you guys um, can execute things that are kind of similar to that. The very first one, of course, you can pick from your own photographs, and I encourage that. So, like, especially if you have a pet at home or, ac you know, access to photographing an animal, photographing them, it would be a little bit more meaningful to you, of course. But this first one, I'm okay if you choose existing images that you find on Google. Specifically, I'm going to ask you to look, when you go under Images, when you go to Tools, uh, look for the um, option that says Label Free for reuse with modification. Obviously, you are heavily modifying this, so I want you guys to make sure that um, you can use photographs that you can and are allowed to modify and use from the originator. Therefore, it's something that you could put up in a show, you can add it to your portfolio, you can put it on social media, and you won't have to worry about um, any trouble with someone saying, hey, that's my photograph, you didn't have the right to do that, okay? So the very first thing I recommend that you do is Find some clear photographs that you think would work well together. For example, the eagle head and this other eagle, not a good mashup. They're the same thing. So you're probably not going to get a big return on your money, okay? When you want to look at an image, or sorry, when you look at an image, you want an image that shows a portion of this animal in its entirety. In this case, this would be a really cool option because I can see the whole head. I could even put a lion's face inside of there. Or I can say, ooh, that one's interesting. Just make sure it's labeled for reuse. I keep scrolling, and I really want to look, and I want to see the options. This would be a poor idea, because I can only see a portion of the face. To do a mashup would be a really tough, um, a tough fit, because there's not enough to see. So really scroll through. Find some cool options. Even... Um, I would say even better would be to find animals that have faces in a similar direction. That will make your life a heck of a lot easier when it comes time to working. I would then go to those images. Let me find the two that I used. I used the eagle and the wolf. Go ahead to that image, right click, and then go ahead and save that image. So I'm going to go ahead and save that image. You can save it to your H drive. You can save it on your desktop as long as you delete it. So whichever, just for, make sure that you have it saved. I would rename it. So this one would be my wolf. Um, the other one would be my eagle. And I would be good to go. I already saved mine. I'm going to move over to Photoshop now. And in Photoshop, what I want you to do is I want you to open up both of the files. So you're going to file open. And you can open up the eagle and the wolf. Now you can hold the control key down and you can get both files at once or just open them up one at a time and then say open. Good to go. I've already done that so I'm going to cancel. But you can see up here I have two tabs. One is the eagle and the other is the wolf. Okay. The thing that I'm putting on top is what I'm going to start working with. So the eagle head is going on top of the wolf. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the eagle head. I need to cut out this eagle head. And you've got to figure out some interesting ways of doing that because it does depend on your animal. The first most basic way of doing that is going one, two, three, four tools down. You're going to have this thing called a quick selection. This quick select tool is perfect for this eagle because the eagle is very bright and it's against a dark backdrop. If you, can pick, if you can pick something that contrasts, I would definitely recommend looking for those. It will make your job a lot easier, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm on the uh, Quick Select Plus right here. I'm adding to my selection. And what I do is, I'm going to go back to my background, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and click, and I'm going to drag this. I'm going to let go of the click every so often. Because if I click and drag it too far, and I, oops, 
I can undo. I can control Z and go take that back. But if I do the whole thing and then I go out here and say, oops, I have to redo all of that work and I don't want to have to redo all of that work. Okay. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to continue. This did an excellent job um, simply because it's a huge amount of contrast there. So I do have that. Now, if I need to refine it, if I need to kind of fix it up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my quick mask. And that's right underneath my color picker. I'm going to edit in quick mask mode. And that quick mask mode is going to be right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And from there, I need to go to my paintbrush. From my paintbrush, I'm now going to go ahead and make some adjustments. So in my color picker, I want to go ahead and I want to click right here on the black and white. That brings me right back to my default, and I need that. Black reveals, white conceals. If you choose another color, it's not going to give you the same results. So what I do with a paintbrush, you see if I click over here, you see how it's actually adding back that in the selection? That's how I can refine it. So let's say, no, I really want to go along the edge, and I want to add on a little bit. So what I can do there is I'm going to put white on the top. I might soften the, the edge of my brush, and I'm going to control plus, and I'm going to zoom, zoom, zoom in. And I might come in, make my brush smaller. Again, use those parentheses, or I'm sorry, the brackets. And I might come here on the edge and soften that edge and get a little bit of the feather that's right underneath it. You can see that I can add to that selection. So I'm going to soften that and add that in. Again, some of you will need it, some of you will not. Some of you will be just fine with doing the quick select tool, okay? Um, let's say I go out here. Oops, I didn't want that. I switch my color to black, flip it, and add that back in. I don't want that. So now when I turn my quick mask off, that's my new selection. My new selection has moved out, and it's going to be a bit of a fuzzy edge, okay? So the next thing you're going to look for is to control J. Let me zoom out. I'm going to control J. If you remember, control J copies a layer, or if you've got crawling ants for a selection, it copies the selection. So I'm going to hit control J, and you can see right here, if I turn off my other layers, I have just the eagle head, okay? At that stage, right click, duplicate your layer, and then move them on over to your other image. In this case, it's my wolf, okay? So I'm going to move them over, and then I'm going to go right over here to my wolf. As I go into my wolf, what you're going to find is that that head has come in. Sometimes, depending on your image size, if you pick images that are similar in size, you'll find it's a little bit more successful. If you pick something that's really small, um, you're going to find that um, making it bigger, you might lose out on quality, like right by 500. That's going to come in really small, so you're going to end up with having to stretch it and maybe kind of making it not look so good. So try to find some similar things. So at this stage, we need to start arranging this. So we can go up to Edit, and we can Free Transform. That's how we can rotate, move this guy into place, decide what angle I want that, even grab the corner. Please, when you make it bigger or smaller, don't just grab it and go. Because if you stretch, you're going to end up making him either really, really chunky or really, really um, thin. Hold that shift key when you stretch it, and it'll become proportion. Rotate, move it around, and kind of fit it the way you want it. Once you're happy with it, then you can start working on what sticks out in the background. Okay? So let's say I'm happy with the positioning. I can come back up here to my move tool. I'm going to kind of scooch him right where I want him. Now I need to work on these ears and part of this stuff that's sticking up that I don't want there. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go back to my background layer. Oops, sorry. Back to my background layer, and I'm going to Control-J that. I want an extra copy. Now you'll notice I have extra copies in here from different things that I have done um, in preparing for the lesson. So right now, if you are correct, you should have a background layer, a background copy layer, and a an animal head layer or whatever that part of the body is that you just made. Okay, next tool. You guys are going to work with this guy right here, and that's called the clone stamp. Clone stamp works like a brush. However, you have to tell it what it's cloning. You know, they clone sheep and they're, you know, looking at the ethics behind cloning people. This basically takes a copy of whatever I've 
clicked on or selected, and it allows me to move it over and apply it somewhere else. So to do that clone, I need to Alt, see how you get that little target sign, and I'm going to click right there. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint a little bit. I'm going to Alt again and pick again and click. Why do I keep Alt clicking? I keep Alt clicking because if I don't, if I pick right here, I'm going to show you, if I pick right there and I'm painting, you see those little that little plus sign? That plus sign is tracking everything that was in and under that spot. So right now, all I'm doing is moving those areas over. Pretty soon, when it goes above, there's the other eye. And that's not what I want to do. So that's why you keep um, clicking and picking again. So Alt-click again, do a little bit. Alt-click again, do a little bit. I Alt-click from the source of what I want it to look like. So if I want it to look like that kind of green, I'm going to Alt-click there. If I want it to look like the beach, I'm going to Alt-click there. That green, Alt-click, move it over. Ears, Alt-click. It's a lot of Alt-clicking. Have your finger on the Alt button and keep repicking. Do not do a ton of work without repicking a new area. So you're basically masking out or erasing what used to be there. When I put that eagle head back on, you can see that he is functioning a little bit better because we're not seeing the other thing. Now I might go ahead and edit free transform or control T. I might bring that head down a little bit. I might move it up just a tad. And now I'm going to get to work with kind of blending him in. So maybe I want to clone a little bit more of the feathers or I want to get some of that texture. At this stage, I want you guys to use your creativity to see how, excuse me, how far you can take it. If I need to get more of those feathers in there, I might even control J that and hide it just in case I kind of mess up. And I might come in here, alt click. I'm going to add another layer of feathers in there. Alt click, alt click. I don't like this area, so I'm going to make that come down. Alt-click, 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 and then I just click. So again, Alt-click, and then you just click to apply the information. Okay? So it's an Alt-click to gather what it is you want, and then just a click to apply it. You can see that's also getting rid of that dark under part of the feathers, which is something that I kind of like a little bit better than leaving. It almost blends it. And again, notice my hardness level is really low, allowing it to get fuzzy on those edges and give you a much more believable appearance. Don't forget you can make this, this bigger if that's working efficiently for you. If it's not, don't make that cursor any bigger. You want it to be efficient for what it is you're working on because without that, you're going to struggle uh, with getting these pieces to match up. And we definitely don't want you to struggle. I want you to have that success. Now I've got to kind of merge these two I might even say, um, see, I've got current and below, so to sample everything, I might grab some of that and pull it in there a little bit and just sort of help it out. I might grab those feathers that are coming up a little bit and get some of those in there. And that would be considered to be pretty close to being a done mashup. This first one should take you just a couple of days because I want you to kind of get your feet wet with it and, and have some fun with it too. Try to match ideas. Again, watch this right here when you're on the clone stamp. If you only want it to pick stuff from that one layer, I just say current layer. If I want it to pick stuff from every layer that's open, I pick all layers. And if I want the current and below, like if I had something above this I didn't want it to pick, I could choose that one as well. Okay, so you've got a few different options a lot of fussing around with it. So please have fun with it. Find images that are labeled for reuse with modification. Save them and then use this video by pausing and trying. Pause and try, pause and try. Um, have it open on your iPad right next to you so that it's a great guide for you. And um, come and see me with your questions. I would be happy to answer them.